Here we go again with another celebrity endorsement who has to change his mind, pretend that he he regrets something. It sounds self-effacing. It sounds like he's being honest, but they're always disingenuous. Celebrities always miss the mark. And in this case, we're going to talk about how this guy missed the mark. Of course, he doesn't get it, even in his attempt to get it. We're talking about The Rock, the absurd world of celebrity political endorsements. Let's get into it. All right, so this is from an interview recently that he just did with Fox News where he's gonna basically say that he regrets endorsing Joe Biden. But as always in a typical celebrity fashion, he stops short of what he needs to do other than what he is actually the most important thing for him to do, just like he did in Maui, which is endorse of tequila. But let's just watch some of this uh, video are this interview that Will Klain did with uh, The Rock, and let's 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 break it down. First, so you're an incredibly charming guy. I mean, you're naturally likable, and I think that's both a compliment and a little bit of an insult. And I'm gonna tell you why I think it's an insult because I think likability can become a currency, and mm. you can almost become addicted to it. It's yeah. a little bit of a poison. I've seen it in my business. Yes. I saw it in sports. I see it in mm. politics. If you're always pursuing and seeking people liking you, yeah. then who are you but for the potential reflection of what they want you to be? That's right. So I want to ask you this. What is it that you believe that, that is important to you no matter its popularity? Um, to be real and to be direct and to be open and to be transparent. And as you and I have talked about, if you ask me a direct question, I'm always going to give you a direct answer, whatever it is. And that's important to me. And authenticity, we hear that word a lot, uh, but that's important to me. And I feel like, and I mean, we could go down the well here, but there's... In today's easy cancel culture world and cancel culture, woke culture, this culture, that culture, division, etc., uh, that really bugs me. And in the spirit of that, you either, in the spirit of that, you either succumb and be what you think other people want you to be, or you go, well, no, that's not who I am. I'm going to be myself. I'm going to be real. If you ask me something, uh, a real answer is important, and the truthful answer is important, and that may get people upset and may piss people off, and that's okay. Well, that's what we've only been able to hang out together twice. Well, I can sense this. I appreciate this this um, desire to be authentic. It's got, by the way, that's got to be hard for you, not because it's unnatural, but yeah. because A, you're a huge celebrity and you're surrounded yeah. by people telling you whatever you do is great or right, right or good. Right. Or on the alternative, Dwayne, you've got people waiting for you to say something controversial to right. tell you how awful you are. That's right. So it's really even if, hard even for if it's you to be not authentic. controversial, by the way, they'll make it controversial. Yeah. Um, but would you say it was hard? To and be? I think that just puts extra pressure and makes it more difficult for you to be authentic. Yeah, but it just comes with a game, I think. It comes with a position that I'm in. But it took me some time to recognize that. At first, I was, in a way, adverse to fame, and I, I didn't understand the power of it, how it could swing both ways. And finally, as I got down the road a little bit and started achieving some notoriety, a little bit of success here and there, I started to realize, oh, man, this is a superpower. The fame is a superpower when used correctly, I believe, when you can use it to influence people and also use it to influence other people in terms of, again, being direct and, and being honest. So let's be direct. Let's be honest. There was a time that you used your fame and it was a time that not everybody was happy. And that was a few years <laughs> right. ago. That's right. And you made a very big point. You said, I've never Maui. done this before. I've never endorsed a political candidate. That's and right. you endorsed Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. And I'm being real with you and you're being real with me. Sure. A lot of people on Fox watching us, you and I talk right now, remember that and wonder about that. You so how, how do you feel right now in retrospect it. with that endorsement? In, in what way? Are you happy that you made that endorsement in 2020? Are you happy with the state of America? Am I happy with the state of America right now? Well, that answer is no. Do I believe we're going to get better? I, I believe in that. I'm an optimistic guy, and I, I believe we can get better. Um, the endorsement that I made uh, years ago with Biden was one I thought was the best decision for me at that time. And I thought back then, when we talk about, hey, you know, I, I'm in this position for him uh, where I have some influence, and it's my job then. I felt like that then. It's my job now to exercise my influence and share with this, this is who I'm going to endorse. Am I going to do that again this year? That answer is no. I'm not. That's the most important part right there. Right there. That's the most important part. He's not, is he going to do that again? The answer is no. Of course he's not going to endorse Biden. Who would do that? Only an insane lunatic liberal that's unhinged off their rocker, doesn't understand the basic psychology of human nature and just wants to destroy a country would do that. But to not endorse anyone, we'll, we'll break that down in a second. Let's, let's just let him finish. I'm not going to do that because what I realized, and I didn't realize it back then, Will, but I realize it today. And back then, just like I am today, very lucky, I was then 
the most followed American man in the world, and I am today <laughs> the most followed American man in the world, and I appreciate that. Uh, but I also realized that what that caused back then was something that tears me up in my guts back then and now, which is division. And that got me, and I didn't realize it then. I just thought, hey, our country feels like there's a lot of unrest. It feels like I would like things to calm down. Maybe we need a change. This is what I'm gonna do, and this is who I'm gonna endorse. The takeaway after that, months and months and months, I started to realize like, oh man, that caused an incredible amount of uh, division in our country. So I realize now going into this election, I'm not gonna do that. I wouldn't do that because my goal is to bring our country together. So he believes that his endorsement caused division in the country. No, his endorsement did not cause division in the country. And he also believes that he needs to make a change is what he said and uh, turn the country in a different direction and support that idea. But the reality is, is the deep state, everything we've been talking about for years, everything that we've been talking, um, trying to avoid, he is also suffering from TDS. He's influenced by the deep state. He's listening to the media. He's probably listening to himself and he's probably trying to sell tequila, but we were on the right track to change. And all we did is go right back to the old guy. I'm, I believe in that, in my DNA. So in the spirit of that, there's gonna be no in endorsement. Not that I'm afraid of it at all, but it's just, I realize that this level of influence, I'm gonna keep my politics to myself. And I think it's between me and the ballot box, but I will tell you this. Well, like, okay, let's break this down. So basically you've, you've heard enough and I'll leave a link below for you guys to watch the entire, entire video, but, or the entire interview with Will Kane. Um, I'm not a big fan of Fox News, but this is important because, you know, they, they do have a little bit of influence left and, and Rock has something to say. What he had to say is not actually that really relevant, which seems to be the, the going thing. But the bottom line is he's not going to endorse anybody. Let's take a look at a few things. One, he wants to be real. If you're going to be real, you got to honestly tell you what you think. Tell people what you think and tell people what you're going to do, no matter your platform or no matter where you're going. That's at the 836 mark. If you guys want to just go back and watch that. And then at the 1205 mark, he deflects. He deflects the endorsement. Um, and then right after that, he tells people how important he is and that he's the most followed man in, the, in America. Right out of the gate, you got narcissism, you have egomaniac, and um, he's, it's out of, his ego is out of control. But he said that he does not want to cause division because that's not what he did. What he did is cause confusion. Like, why would you endorse a corrupt, child-sniffing 50-year-old racist who spoke at the eulogy of a KKK member who is now selling out the U.S. to the Chinese for 10% for the big guy? Why don't you ask yourself that? Look in the mirror. Because they live in denial. They don't believe the, the actual truth. They don't look at the truth. They're being, they're being subverted by the mainstream media or they are part of the mainstream media. So now he's not going to endorse anybody. Well... The reality is that this is the binary choice, right? You have A or you have B. You e you're either pro-America, pro-America, put America first, fix the country, stop the bleeding, the blood, the, the blood bath that is stealing everyday average Americans, stealing our freedom, stealing our dreams, stealing our money. Um, you're killing and murdering around the world with wars. And of course, they are creating and are allowing or endorsing a complete invasion of this country, giving them guns, letting them vote, giving them deep, more money than the vets have. And I have videos coming out on that. So you may want to subscribe and to this channel because you'll be able to see that they're actually paying illegal aliens more money than they're paying people that have served this country. You don't even have to come here illegally. Not only that. But there's now evidence that they've flown well over 320,000 people directly in to the country. This is the Biden administration. So forget the border for a minute. They are circumventing the laws and the rule of law and the desire and the will of the American people to fix the vote to change everything and you're telling me that you're not going to you're not going to endorse anybody well you have another option you have another option and if there's only two candidates in the race you know with the exception of RFK Jr who's not really electable i mean the guy just is his campaign is funded by the ex-wife of the of, of the Google, you know, the guy who founded Google, who's basically the number one 
uh, purveyor of disinformation, misinformation, and control on the entire planet. So he's not electable. Nice guy. Policies aren't great, but you only have one choice left. So option B is what? To endorse nobody? But I thought you were the most followed man in the world. I thought you had all this influence. I thought it was your duty. Now now it's private between you and the, and the, and the uh, ballot box. You guys, the reality is that these guys will say anything to either get into trouble, or get out of trouble, or to sell more tequila. That's the fact. That's all that's important. You know, we, we know what happened to him when he tried to uh, take your money to go fix Lahaina and build it into a smart city that's run by the WEF and the One World Government. You can tell by the governor, and he, there's a video on that below somewhere. I mean, and he stood next to the, I'll call it, you know, Queen of Epstein Island. And at this point, I'm just going to stop because I'll probably get a copyright strike or some sort of strike or the YouTube will take me down for, for saying these things. But we all know what happened in Lahaina and what he did they won't even talk about it on this interview we all we already know what happened and what the backlash was when he came out and said hey we need you to send your money to help you know i was hawaiian dude i mean give me a freaking break he lived in hawaii for a little bit listen i lived there 30 years i am a guest there he is not hawaiian um he is a failed football player i actually like some of his movies they're pretty good um this is the absurd world that we're living in. These are people that you do not need to follow because they don't have any common sense. They still don't get it. You are basically, you still don't get it. You still don't get it. You have a binary choice. It's either Biden or no Biden, in this case, Trump. It, you're either for an invasion or you're against an invasion. You're either for America or you're against America. You either want to put America first, you want to put America last. You want to let a, a diaper wearing you know, soiled up dumbass run this country into the ground or you want to you want to turn the ship right the ship lower the taxes um, put tariffs on China do not let them you know uh, don't let them steal our food don't let them make us drive cars we can't afford or don't want that's your choice and so if your choice is now not to make a choice it's still a bitch move so the rock I think we should change his name to the pebble Folks, that's all I got for you. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Also, if you want to support this channel, you can either buy my book, Vendetta, which is right over there, and it's really cool. It's actually about a Hawaiian who takes down the deep state. It's available on Amazon, link below. Or just buy one of those, buy one of these cool mugs, you know, and just put America first. And stay tuned, because this stuff's about to get nutty. I'll see you guys on another video. Bye.